In this video, we're going to talk about personal pronouns in Attic Greek, which goes with section 118 of Hansen and Quinn's Greek, an intensive course. And you can find that in Hansen and Quinn on pages 441 and 442. So we're going to talk about personal pronouns. And you may wonder, why is it three quarters of the way through the book that we are finally learning how to say I and you? Since very often in language learning, it's the personal pronouns that you start with. Well, of course, you already know the answer to why we could wait for so long. In English, when we say I teach, we must have that personal pronoun I. But in Greek, when we say, for instance, didasko, we don't need a personal pronoun. It's already part of the verb. So we've been pretty easily able to get away with not learning new paradigms of personal pronouns all this time while we were learning all of the delightful variations that Greek verb forms, for instance, have. So, but now we, here we are in Unit 15 and personal pronouns are useful in Greek and do do important things. So let's get on with learning their forms. We'll start with first person, that is to say, with the I and the we forms. So it's Greek, so we're going to have it in singular and plural, and we're going, we're going to need to have the pronouns in all of the cases. And here they are. Ago means I. In the genitive, we get emu, which has an accent and an e at the beginning, but there's also an unemphatic version, simply mu, enclitic, so no accent, and without the epsilon at the beginning. And either of those means of me, or any of the other things that you can do with the genitive case. We'll talk uh, in a little bit about the difference between the emphatic version, emu, and the unstressed version, mu. We'll get two different versions also in the dative, emoi and moi, so two or four me in the most default sense, and then in the accusative, eme and me. And there again, anything that you use the accusative for, you can now say me with. In the plural, there'll only be one form for each case, and so let's get those started. Hey, mace for we, hey, moan for of us or anything else you do with the genitive, hey, mean for to or for us, and hey, mas for us in any situation where us needs to be in the accusative. You can also see right there how English still does have a little bit of case in its language and in our forms. I is always the subject, it's always the nominative form, and me is anything that is an object form in English. We is always the subject form, always the nominative, and us is used for the other cases in English. So just a little thing about English that you can notice. Let's go on to the second person. In the nominative for second person singular, we get su for you. In the genitive and all of the other cases of the second person singular, we're going to get the emphatic and the unemphatic forms again. The non-enclitic su and the enclitic su for the genitive of you. And then in the dative, we'll get soy and soy, to or for you. And in the accusative, sa and sa, for any accusative use of the second person singular pronoun, you. Now here, it's just the accent that makes the difference. There isn't an extra letter as there is in the first person pronouns, but I think you'll easily make those distinctions. In the plural, we don't get alternative forms for emphatic and unemphatic. We'll simply have one set, and those are humais for y'all, humon for of y'all, humin to or for y'all, and humas for y'all. 
Now you will have noticed that these forms are incredibly similar to the first person plural. And the only difference is that the first person plural has ada, hey, at the beginning, and the second person plural has upsilon, who, at the beginning. I remember which is which by thinking of you and oo and who all as similar sounding. And so I remember that who mace, who moan, who mean, and who mas are second person plural. So let's go on to the third person. Here, you actually already know all these forms. Since we only need nominative pronouns when we're being emphatic, we'll simply use the demonstrative pronouns that we already have. So all of the forms of hutos in the nominative, or hade in the nominative, or ekenos in the nominative. If you need to be stressing a particular third person subject, something in the nominative, you'll use one of these demonstrative pronouns. In the genitive and the dative and the accusative, you use the word that you already know, which is the non-nominative forms of autos. And you already know those, and we've already discussed when we learn the different ways to use that word, how in these cases, it can simply be the third person pronoun. So that's all of the forms that you need to know. You already knew all of the third person ones, and now you know the first and second person as well. So let's see how these work. Edidaxa ton adalfon. No pronouns there. It's simply, I taught my brother. But if you want to make sure that people know that it was I who taught my brother, that's when you're going to add ego at the beginning. So ego adidaxa ton adelfon gives the emphasis to I as the subject. Or you can even translate that as it was I who taught my brother because that ego being there is that emphatic. It is doing that much work to say, no, really, look at me. I'm the one who did it. Here's another example. Ego men sofe su de amathes. The personal pronouns are really good to use when you're trying to create a contrast, especially with that lovely men and de construction. So this is, I am wise, you are ignorant. The point of the difference, the point of the alternative, the men and the de, is between I and you. So those pronouns are very appropriate here. Now, there's a little bit of a funny thing just about spelling with ego and emoi. If you want to add ga to those ideas, I at least, then you actually make it part of the word and the accent changes a little bit. So it's ego ga to mean I at least. And with emoi, it's emoi ga for me at least. So it's not really hard to see how that happens, but you have to get used to the idea that when you see that form, that you should think of that as ego and ga or emoi and ga. So just be on alert for that. They happen quite a bit and you may not immediately see that as the pronoun and ga. Let's look at a few more examples. A few more examples just to get you used to the different ways that we use the pronouns, both emphatic and unemphatic. Ublapto auton ala se. There we've got one of the emphatic versions of the second person singular because this says, I'm not harming him, I don't harm him, but I harm you. It's pointing out with some emphasis that the person I'm actually doing something to is you, and so you would use the emphatic form with the accent. Ublaptomensa, though, without the accent, the enclitic form simply means we're not harming you. Not emphatic, just we're not doing this. So you don't need the accent there and you would use the enclitic form of sa. Tutong moi edokas simply means you gave me this unemphatic, nothing stressing that it was I that you gave it to. It's simply, you gave this to me. And one more example. 
Hemas. Don't wrong us. There are no different emphatic or unemphatic forms in the plural personal pronouns, so it would be context or perhaps some particles that would tell you whether this was emphatic or not, but in this form it's simply don't wrong us. Nothing emphatic about it, simply saying don't do this. And I hope that that's a good start for you on personal pronouns. Use the drills in Hanson and Quinn to practice using them and their different emphases.